Welcome to Bold to Go, where no man has gone before, into a review of the Awada Smart Jet Pro. Nah, no good. But it is Halloween, so I had to do something today. You love my trussed up gray locks here. And the Star Trek uniform. Yeah, anyhow, we're here to talk about this. I did an out-of-box review of it earlier. I didn't post it. Wasn't any good, in my opinion. I showed pulling it out of the box. There isn't nothing to showing pulling it out of the box. I can tell you what you get in the box. I, though I can't find the paperwork that come with it, and I don't know why. I should be able to find it. It had some uh, parts attached to it, so I know I wouldn't have thrown it away. But that's neither here nor there. We're going to talk about this. This is the show today. We have the, uh, a Wada Studio Series. It is the PowerJet Pro, not SmartJet Pro, PowerJet Pro. It has a tank. It has a dual piston compressor. I last ran this about six days ago, five days ago, and it's showing 70 PSI in the tank still. No air leaks. <clears throat> over the last seven days. It's holding its pressure. All I've done is screwed on a quick connect right here. We'll talk about that in a minute. It comes with two of these hoses. When you open the box, you get two hoses. <coughs> it comes with an adapter for Apache, Badger, and Awada airbrushes. And it comes with quick connects on this end of the compressor. These quick connects are there. Quick connects already on the coiled hoses. Okay. It comes with two pressure regulators, two pressure gauges, two moisture traps, you can see they're pressurized, two pressure regulators to change the pressure you have to have your airbrush blowing air you pull this knob up and you turn it. I'm not going to change the pressure because there's no airbrush hooked up to that. I've got this one set at a little over 20 right now. When it's blowing it's closer to 20 because that's the proper pressure for spray, spraying acrylic inks, and that's what I was doing last. You'll see that in a minute. I'll give you that clip in a minute. I was spraying acrylic inks with this thing through here. The compressor runs whenever the pressure in the tank goes below 55 PSI, and it pumps it right back up to 70. 70 PSI, this little tank down here, and I'm sure you guys can see the tank down there at the bottom. Verily. Let me lower the camera a teeny bit close-up of my beautiful hair. The tank down here refills and it says right here 75 PSI to 55 PSI. That's what that tank runs between. Okay. At 55, at 70 PSI, I'm spraying at 15 PSI. It takes a while for this tank to deplete. It's not a very big tank. It's a 0.6 liter tank if I remember right. Not even a full, you know, liter. Not even a gallon. It's a very small tank. But it still holds enough air pressure I can spray for a bit without the compressor running. Um, I did a half hour spray session on Saturday and the compressor ran like three times. That's not very long for that compressor to run for a half hour spray session. So this is going to meet my needs very well. It's about as loud as the Pache compressor was. Okay, so noise quality isn't very big. Here, let me get an airbrush, hook it up to this so I can run it for a little bit and let you see how much it actually does the com runs the compressor while we're talking and how noisy the compressor is. So I'm getting my Badger 105 out. Okay. Hooking it up to there. Removing the caps. You can hear it's moving air right now. Yeah, she's running at about 20 PSI. Oh, it helps if I turn this on. No, it's on. She's running about 20 PSI. The air in the tank is slowly dropping. It's at 60 now. I've got a constant 20 here. This is pretty much tank pressure here because this is unregulated. In other words, I haven't adjusted the regulator on this. I left this at full stream. There you go. She kicked on at 55. takes her right back up to 70 again. 75. And it's not very loud. And you can tell in my air pressure right now. It's holding really constant at 20 PSI. And it's taking it a while to run. 
And the point, the reason why I went with this model is BB's learning how to use an airbrush and she's using the acrylic inks. She's putting the ink on paper and she will run the airbrush for a half hour to an hour easily and it was just killing the Pache compressor because it was constantly running for that time. It was getting so hot you could cook an egg on the thing literally. And that's why it died. It just overheated. Again, you can see it isn't all that loud. It's a little bit louder than that Pache was, but it's a much heavier compressor. Much heavier. I mean, it's got two pistons in it. Now, I'm not going to take the outer cover off this thing. I just don't want to do that today. Okay? To show you what's going on. But what I found really, really strange with this thing is it has a square tank. Every compressor I've ever seen has a round tank. This one has a square tank. It's got some real heavy welds on that square tank, too. If, let's see, I dropped the remote to the camera. Let's zoom in and see if you guys can actually see that. Well, what would a video by me be if you didn't have a zoom in? Yeah, you can see the square tank down here. This is a square tank. Okay? And that just amazes me. Because I know enough about uh, mechanics and materials from my civil engineering days, structural engineering days, to know that that is not easy to design for and that tank is going to have much thicker walls on it than say a round or spherical, uh, cylindrical or spherical tank would have. That's why those things are always in that shape because it distributes the pressure more evenly. This thing, a square tank, is going to have more pressure on the corners than it is the edges. So they have to bake a really beefy tank in there to make it square. But the square tank cuts the size of this thing down some. Anyhow, um, the, I found this when I was looking over there. This is how the ho hoses come coiled. They have a wad of ends on them. They sent adapters again for a Pache, a wada, and a Badger. And I wish I could find the directions to read everything to you guys. But I think most of you get the idea about this thing. The side of the thing, I, I haven't removed these yet, says two times the smart jet power, two times adjustable pressure regulators, two moisture filters, two airbrush holders. These are the airbrush holders right here. And they hold the airbrushes really nicely. Okay? So there's my review of this thing. Um, I've used it. It works great. Works very well. No sputtering, no nothing. Okay? Uh, no pressure die off while I'm working. Everything is just outstandingly great. And I got it from my local hobby shop. I did not buy it online. My whole local hobby shop is a bit more expensive than I can find it online. But I like to support my local businessman when I can because I'm a local businessman. I'm a small businessman. I love it when people support me, so I support these guys. And he wasn't that much more than anywhere else I could find it. I mean, he was more expensive, but, you know, you got to keep these guys in business or they won't be there. So that's why I did it. I also order most of my paint from him, even though I know I can get it a little bit cheaper online. Just a matter of keeping your local business here so you have one when you need it. Alright folks, I'm going to show you the rest of the clips I made on this. Not all of them, just a few. I painted up a pumpkin for Halloween, so you guys get to see that part. I will talk to you later. Okay, I have the lighting kind of funny in this room. I'm sitting right dead center under all the bright, bright lighting. We've got... 10, 12 watt LED light bulbs in every single one of the sockets. So there's a lot of light in this room, just not right where I'm sitting because I'm directly underneath the three lights running off the ceiling fan. But you can see this just fine. I have one of the hoses hooked up to the smart jet. I bought a quick connect for it. And with my luck, yeah. The quick knit connect ends are pretty universal. You just have to buy the right one for your hose. That way, if you buy a Badger airbrush, you're having a water compressor. You buy the water Quick Connect here, and the Badger Quick Connect there, and they fit together just fine. So this goes on there just beautifully. Okay, I'm going to turn the Smart Jet around. Okay, we're going to put that there for right now, and we're going to turn it on. I say that because they're at 60 PSI. It cut off at almost 60 PSI. 
Now, I do not want to run 60 PSI through my airbrush. Yeah, that's going to spray stuff like madness. Okay. So she's at 60 PSI, and i got to adjust the pressure regulator on that. So give me a second. I'm going to see how to do that. Because, you know, every single one is differently. Maybe if I read the directions, it'll say, huh? Because <laughs> it says to do that. Okay, it says the air pressure regulator regulates the full airflow of the air pressure gauge. Indicates how much pressure you're using when airbrushing. The compressor is running and the airbrush is not in use. So the pressure gauge will be between 40 and 50. Okay. So we know this tank's pressurized about 50 PSI. Okay. Well, there's a separate pressure gauge for the tank. Okay. You adjust the working pressure to a lower air pressure setting. Activate the airflow by pressing the trigger down the airbrush. Simultaneously, turn the pressure regulator knob counterclockwise until it's reading at the working pressure you desire. Okay, so I turn it clockwise, so I take this, push it clockwise that way. Oh boy, this thing's stiff. Let me put that back in there, let me make sure I can turn these knobs. Oh. They are tight. Okay, I'm going to have to figure out how to loosen them. Because they're very, very tight. And I'm not sure how to loosen them. I'll be back in a minute. I'm not going to do this and waste video time. It would figure. I'd press stop on the record and figure it out immediately. Okay, so we turn them counterclockwise. Hold this down. Start turning counterclockwise. You pull the knob up to turn it. I got her turned down to about 15 PSI. The other one is rating at 75 PSI and this is 15. Okay. That's, this is gonna be a good setup for me because different paints want different pressures. I just set each side to the pressure I want and tag them. So I know which side is running at which pressure. Okay. Now I'm gonna take some of this acrylic ink. I bought the daughter for playing with the airbrush. And, oh, I'm not putting that blue in there. The blue's got some hair or something in it. So let's try this bright, bright orange. Shall we? This stuff cleans out of the airbrush with water, so it's one of the reasons why I bought it. And this thing is silent. No air leaks, no nothing. Now I can I have it I didn't get a chance to clean this when it died so there's probably some issues here with the airbrush and I've got the air pressure dialed down I think a little too low for this ink so I'm going to dial it up some That's much better we're at 20 psi now Okay, that tank just scared me a little bit. I can tell I need to get out and practice my airbrush stroking again. But anyhow, it works great. And you can see it doesn't run constantly. It's really, really quiet. I like the tank approach. I think this is going to work much better for BB in her artwork. I do. I think she's going to enjoy this a lot better. In all seriousness. Because, honestly, she's going to have. an easier time with this thing and from the sounds of it it can run a 
a lot longer. Okay? Sounds like you can run a lot longer for the money that we've spent on it. Good thing the lid's on that. else can I do with this? I know what I can do. Let's put some of this in there. That's what I wanted. Alright, you guys, you can tell I'm just playing with it. But anyhow, you get the idea. This is kind of relaxing and fun. To sit here and just paint on paper for once instead of painting on a whole lot of plastic. Oh, great! All right, I gotta go. I just spilled ink all over the carpet. Okay, the sound is the floor being cleaned. It's gonna take it a while to clean it. We're gonna probably have to run this machine like 15 times, but it is coming up. I got it on the chair pretty bad, and it's gonna leave a little mark, but not bad. Got it on my legs real bad, and my jeans are probably gonna have to be washed a lot. What I was using was acrylic based ink. This stuff. So it comes up, it's just takes a while. Alright, just thought I'd show you that oops, my mistake. And I was upset because I was painting the pumpkin and he was looking good. Alright, be back later. <laughs> Hi. Okay everyone, I wanted to show you I did finish the pumpkin. I don't know if it's all that great or not, but I will say this, if you want to learn how to control your airbrush and control it well. And we got a jack-in-the-box BB here. If you want to control your airbrush and learn how to control it well, get yourself some paper and start painting. I mean, I know people that say, learn on a curved surface like your model. And to a certain extent, that's true. But you also learn how to control the paint flow. Maybe. She's okay. You also learn how to control the paint flow and how much is coming out at one time by painting photos like this, pictures like this. That's how BB's been playing with it. She wants to play with it some more, don't you, BB? You want to do more airbrush, BB? Yes! See, she wants to do more airbrush and the new compressor. I'm pretty sure she could sit here for a couple of hours without damaging that compressor. Yay! <laughs> See, she's excited to hear that. Um, I this pumpkin took me a good 25 30 minutes and it didn't even heat up that compressor. So, yes, BB could sit here for hours playing with the airbrush Yay! without any trouble. The only thing we're gonna have to do is get some holders for those inks so she can't knock them over like I did. And there's still black stains on the carpet. Yay! You don't have to say, Shh, don't tell Nellie, she's in the room, she knows. Yep. Yeah. Okay, I cleaned it up. I, you know, she's over here, right on the edge of the camera, okay? Uh, you were right on the edge of the camera. They can see your shoulder and part of your face the whole time we're talking. So anyhow, wanted to show you that I did finish the pumpkin just in time for Halloween. I like your pumpkin, guys. Thank you. I don't, I don't know how good of artwork that really is. I don't think it's bad. I'm using acrylic inks. I'm not using paint. I could probably do a much better job of paint since I'm used to it. The paper just absorbs it. It's not like on a model. And that is one thing to take in consideration. But again, you're going to learn how to make your lines. You're going to learn how to control the paint flow by just trying to shade something like this. So this is a great way to start with an airbrush once you first get one. Plus these inks leave no odor in the room. They really don't. 
they're fairly non-toxic, if you ask me. So, you want to learn? Great way to start. That's how BB's doing it, isn't it? That's exactly where BB airbrushes on that easel. Although I have her in the spray booth, so she spills the ink, it gets absorbed in the spray booth. I'm going to make a tray for those inks. Towels. True, BB, but I'm going to make a tray for those inks as soon as I get the drill press out, and I will. You'll just be able to put the bottles in there, and you won't be able to tip them over like that, okay. like I did. Does that work? Okay. And you won't be able to spill them. And it does clean up with alcohol. I just clean the airbrush really well with alcohol. All right, I got to help BB with some letters, and when I'm done, I'm going to paint something. So, see you guys in a bit. Stop up. <laughs> Take two. Okay.